The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Thursday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And man, quite a market coming off Fed Day yesterday. Uh, putting things on a 15-minute basis yesterday, you come down to right near the lows of Tuesday. And man, you're talking about more than 100 points. You're talking about almost 140 points. You're talking about all-time highs this morning, just prior to 7 a.m., trading at 47.43. Since then, though, you've had the S&Ps give up about half a percent uh 22 points to the downside 47.20 from those highs still positive by about 20 points on the s p's nasdaq positive by 45 points this move in the nasdaq man watch out uh microsoft had some pretty magnificent moves apple nearing the three trillion dollar mark yet again we have the nasdaq 100 yesterday Chairman Powell comes on, 15,750. You trade up, how about 700 points to the highs this morning, 16,457. Now, you take a look, 16,457. You're talking about only about 300 points. You're talking about almost 2%. We were away from the all-time highs in the NASDAQ 100. Jump over to the Dow. The Dow this morning makes it up above 36,000 briefly to 36,098. You're talking about less than 1% away from all-time highs. And the Dow and the Russells positive by 15 points, pretty far away from, you're talking about 10% away from all-time highs on the Russell, 10% on the Russell. Crude catching a bid this morning up 91 cents at 71.57. Gold catching quite a bid as well. We'll jump over to that in a moment. You got gold yesterday, man. Watch out, down to 17.53. Gold roars back to 17.80. The uptrend continues to 17.90 this morning in gold. We jump to notes and bonds. We're getting a little bit of higher price, lower yield. The yield on the 10-year right now, 1.45%, 1.45%, not bad in the 10-year, you're positive by nine ticks right now. The 30-year is negative by nine ticks at 161.15. And we jump around, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. I talked about it yesterday, This uh, in terms of the action yesterday. Microsoft, my goodness, you're talking about a move, man. Yesterday, you're down to 324.50, and just like that, we gained $10 on the shares of Microsoft quite the volatility to the downside and Microsoft almost gets it all back from Tuesday's action. We jump over to Apple shares. Apple was up above 181 this morning. I believe the price, 182.86, I believe, 182.86. Uh, bottom line, it makes it to 183. You got a $3 trillion company in Apple. You're trading at 179.50 this morning. That's going to be up about 20 cents on the open. We jump over to Tesla shares this morning. Tesla, just under 1,000. Quite the move this thing had yesterday as well. Down to 928. Over 1,000 briefly this morning, trading at 991. Google shares this morning up as well. Google, man, all of these moves are pretty remarkable. We're going to jump to Amazon next. But Google trades from 2860, almost up $100. For the highs we had pre-market, and Amazon did $100. I think they had 150 bucks yesterday. Uh, no, almost 200 bucks. Yeah, how about that? From 3303, yeah, about 150 point run from lows to highs yesterday in Amazon. You had a print this morning of 34. 93, $190 on the price of Amazon from where we were yesterday at 1215 to where you were printing just this morning at 645 when you had the market at highs. Now, man, this one surprised me. Uh, first, the analysis was hawkish, right? We come over to the headlines. Fed uh, doubles taper, signals three 2022 hikes in inflation pivot in the market, folks. Trades to all time highs. Uh, I found it most interesting, the term uh, dovish hawkish. Maybe the, maybe the Fed chairman, quite a balancing act when he can actually get called dovish hawkish, which is what some of my friends even were calling it the uh, statement, the press conference, the press conference, excuse me. Uh, and with the headline numbers in terms of 322, 2022 rate hikes, uh, when you're talking about dot plots, et cetera, they're going to double the taper. They're going to accelerate that taper. I listened to some of the press conference. Uh, Chairman Powell saying basically 
when they got that CPI data, that was kind of the nail in the coffin, that he knew that there was there was a time to accelerate things. At the last meeting, they were really close to actually uh, increasing the pace of the taper, but didn't quite go there, waited for more data. And man, did they get that data with CPI data coming in at 6.8%. But then he also went on to basically signal that they're going to be in there for the long haul. Full employment is probably a long way away that is their mandate full employment and price stability price stability obviously in a little bit of flux right now uh, but nonetheless pretty remarkable the acceleration there now jumping back to let's just see if we can put it on a five minute to see the the real acceleration because the first move was down at two o'clock the statement gets released uh, the first move was down, the hawkish tendency causing a little bit of fear in the market, and then you just roared higher to the tune of 140 points above where you were, uh, a low of 46.02, 141 points to be exact, 141.25, quite a run from lows to highs yesterday, and look where it bounces, folks, right on the lows intraday yesterday, about 4,600, a nice round number, and there you accelerate higher in a big way uh, to higher prices you go. Gold, really accelerating. Gold's been in struggling for a while. Yesterday, the first time we really get a run in gold, 1791, right up to the highs we had on Monday. Within a dollar of those highs, actually, 1792. You take a look at gold on a daily. It's been chopping around, man. Bounces on that lower portion of where you might be. Now, you back this up even further on gold. You take a look at the full run we had during COVID, okay, from a low in last March of 1450 up to a high of 2089. Seems like gold just finding some support there along that 50% retracement number, whether it was back in June, you bounce. August, you did get a dive lower briefly before you bounced back in late September, early October, right around that line. And we bounced yet again at about that level of uh, 1770 or about is where gold seems to find a little bit of a bid. We'll see where it goes from here. Okay, what else we have going on? Uh, weekly jobless claims, 206,000, higher than expected and above pandemic low. But man, all things considered, you're talking about quite a low number. Uh, the four-week moving average declined to its lowest level since November 15th, 1969. So taking a four-week average, there's going to be some variance in the numbers you're getting on a weekly basis. Probably a more accurate reflection if you're taking a, a moving average of some degree, 206,000. You're talking about low, low numbers. Uh, in this economy, 195 was the estimate, uh, and uh, a gain of 18,000 from the previous week's upwardly revised 188,000. You check it out on a chart, though. Those are declining levels, maybe in the last four weeks, reaching a lower level. I mean, we are in a healthy economy. It's important to remember that you have a churn of somewhere around 200, 250,000 jobs on a weekly basis, initial jobless claims. The argument could be made that you can have less because of the tight labor market, because of the amount of people that we're trying to get back into the workforce. Maybe we should have less people right now filing for an initial unemployment claim as we're trying to get those jobs back into the labor force. Uh, but nonetheless, pretty strong numbers and shown by the fact that on a four week moving average, you're talking about 203,750, the lowest level since 1969. And yeah, and let's see, where else are we? Yeah, weekly claims, amazing. 6.15 million, the numbers during the pandemic. Continuing claims, there we go. Uh, now that's a week behind. 1.845 million is the number for continuing claims. And you can see the trend there, lower numbers on a continuing claim basis. That is a one week delay versus the initial claims number. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We'll talk to our man, Kevin Hicks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market. We'll be right back, folks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P right now up 19 points, just off the all-time highs we printed this morning at 47.43. You got the NASDAQ up 40, Dow up 140 right now. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network. Fast market, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups. Kevin Hinks, quite a day yesterday in the market for that balancing act for the Fed chairman. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, uh, Jerome Powell did it again. He was able to pick up the pace of the taper and still uh, calm the markets by saying that there's, even though they have a dot plot that shows 9% or 0.9% Fed funds at the end of 2022 and 1.6% Fed funds at the end of 23, he made it clear that is not a committee decision or not a committee plan. And so even though dot plots, he basically did what he always does, was say dot plots mean nothing. So uh, I thought Jerome Powell clearly differentiated between tapering and raising interest rates. So, and I think that's what the market at the end, they really like. And for a macroeconomic geek like me, boy, that was a press conference full of nuggets of information that I just loved. Even talking about the fool in the shower theory by Milton Friedman. It was awesome. It is cool, man. I was driving around. I, I was here at two o'clock had to jump in the car right at 2 30 and i was like this is the best car audio i can have man a fed chairman uh press conference right uh one thing i found interesting to, to speak to what you're kind of speaking to is there was a question um to some degree about how you'll go forward etc as they're always trying to find out and he said the chairman said something to the tune of you know we're looking for an estimation of maybe four percent gdp growth next year and that's what we're predicating maybe these rate hikes on so if you get you don't get that type of economic action then maybe we can pull back or not do what we're talking about and i you know just to speak it was pretty remarkable first it comes out market goes a little bit lower you talk about maybe some hawkish words in the actual statement during the press conference one of my friends kevin was using the term and i heard it used out there on tv i think last night at some point dovish hawkish talk about a balancing act when you can get called dovish and hawkish as you're putting out there that the rate hikes are accelerating 
I didn't think it was possible, man, in terms of the risk versus upside to downside moves. And Chairman Powell gets it done, 140 points to the upside, just like that from where we are yesterday, man. Uh, with that in mind, Kevin, we got some stocks going on. And, you know, beyond that, the market action, we got gold moving today. We have, what, a surprise, uh, excuse me, I'm losing it. We had a surprise rate. Uh, oh, I'm losing it. Excuse me. Bay, Bank of England surprises with a rate hike out there. What are you guys going to be talking about on the show coming up today, Kevin? Yeah, so Nathan Peterson's on and we're gonna, and with Tom White and I, and we're going to look at Square. We're going to trade, uh, look, discuss and trade Square. Then we're going to look at FedEx and then in the in the B block and then uh, like folio doing a presentation on that and then the last will trade garden restaurants which has earnings before the open tomorrow morning nice yeah pretty interesting uh fedex the pullback they've had recently taking a look on the daily chart up to 320 down to 216 you're sitting at about 240 uh we jump over to the analyze tab you jump over to the earnings they're looking at about a 14 dollar move priced into the options about a 240 dollars stock uh i'm gonna jump over to gold real quick kevin because of the move that it is having today you know uh my dad he's a big gold bug out there of course yep. uh but gold interesting action in light of what's going on finally actually catches a bid on the move yesterday you got any opinions on that gold contract out here it's been struggling lately man Sure, I, I can talk about gold the same way I can talk about silver. Look at the move in silver this morning, and that is a direct inverse relationship to this move in the U.S. dollar. I think that weakness in the dollar has got a bid in gold and a bid in silver this morning, Tommy. Yeah, it's interesting how they all relate. I think it was, it was something like 20, 25 central banks this week alone, man. Bank of England, ECB, our Fed chair. Uh, and we still got, Kevin, a 10-year yield sitting right at about 1.45%, right where we came into things, which is interesting for the 10-year. We've had some movements on that yield curve, though, of course. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the conversation, man. You're talking about a few great stocks, Square, FedEx. We'll look for those earnings estimates. And uh, we always enjoy how you break down the conversation, break down those hypothetical trades man uh you have a great day we'll be watching at 12 noon eastern time today kevin thanks for having me on tommy talk soon always a pleasure man take care folks tune in every trading day 12 noon eastern time kevin hinks tom white they do an outstanding program folks they really do uh i love the market commentary and the hypothetical trade setups the best way to learn options folks um even if you're not an options trader just understanding it to understand the premiums of how options work as an equity trader is something that you should understand uh, but maybe it's something you get into with a small portion of your portfolio in options one of the cool parts of options is that you can trade for pretty affordable numbers i mean in some trades you can put in there you're risking fifty dollars 150 bucks 250 bucks defined risk which is the coolest part of trading options in my opinion with that in mind we jump over to the vix talk about sucking volatility out of this market there's a drop off in volatility for you yesterday from 2347 we dropped to 1872 1819 was the overnight low all of that volatility premium sucked in that out of that market as this market just proceeds to trade higher going to be interesting to see how this open goes not a lot of weakness out there folks and i would agree with Kevin in terms of his assessment, you know, they changed the wording, they upped the ante in terms of accelerating the taper, but everything is up for grabs, basically is how Chairman Powell put it, in my opinion, in terms of talking about, listen, this is all predicated on some pretty rosy scenarios of growth coming forward into the next year. Yes, they have to get inflation under control, but growth is still there in a big way, and that's allowing them to increase the taper and three rate hikes next year followed by maybe a few more the year after that if we don't get that type of growth on gdp uh i'm not so so sure that at least the message chairman powell was putting out is that yes those rate hikes don't need to come if the economy is not accelerating in the way that he anticipates and the board anticipates uh calm the markets a bit after that first pullback on the statement we jump back i mean that was a short-lived pullback though by the end of the 205 bar you were already higher and by the time chairman powell came on though you can see we were still trading at about 1626 so you were about five or ten points of where you were when the statement came out it was all about the press conference man you charged higher from 230 you closed at basically session highs at about 4700 and overnight you trade to a high print on the futures of 4743 we're trading right now 4722 bitcoin a little bit of volatility for bitcoin trading with the market as well interesting that bitcoin now has such a parallel to the market i mean look at it 
really similar action to the stock market that bitcoin is trading with the market 48,805 this morning you're down 545 bucks technically on the session natural gas talk about some volatility putting this thing on a daily been quite a pullback finally looks to be chopping around in an area just under four bucks of 387 for natural gas there's your gold contract up 24 bucks 1788 we put it on the five minute slight pullback from above 1790 and as we mentioned notes and bonds uh we're continuing a little bit of higher price right now we got the yield in the tenure 1.45 percent all right folks stay tuned i'll be back in three minutes for the open we got the s p's coming into that open up 22 points you got the nasdaq 100 up 40 we got apple shares going to open at 179.25 you're talking about about three dollars and fifty cents away from all-time highs microsoft on a tear yesterday up almost 10 bucks microsoft going to open higher yet again by about a dollar stay tuned folks i'll be coming right back for the open Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&P up 20 points, NASDAQ 100 up about 33, Dow up about 164. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks. Amazon shares opening up about two tenths percent right now today. Microsoft up four tenths. We jump to the big dog, Apple. Apple actually in the red. 
Blasphemy, Apple in the red, down two tenths percent at 179. We jump to Tesla shares, up 1.5 percent as Mr. Elon Musk continues to sell his shares. We jump to gold right now, up $24. All right, jumping around to what else we have. Pulling up the headlines, so just touching on it briefly, Bank of England surprises with first hike in crisis to curb inflation. Um, follows a hawkish Fed move, as we've talked about. Most economists anticipated no change from the Bank of England, but nonetheless, they have a hike over in England. Uh, of course, you have the British pound U.S. dollar moving on that news out there. Um, always interesting when you get a little bit of a surprise and looks like they're a little bit worried about inflation. The Bank of England hikes rates with price gains at highest in a decade. Highest in a decade? Come on, in the U.S., we're breaking records for like 50 years out there. Uh, but nonetheless, that's where they go over in England. Okay, jumping around to uh, stocks we got moving here. Delta forecast profit ahead as travel demand and fares rise despite Omicron. Yeah, I think I, I heard for the first time in November maybe we had, we're had we above 2019 levels in terms of travel. I think I heard that recently. I'm not sure if they have that in here. Let's see. Business travel volume is about 60% of 2019 and the like will likely will stay in that range in the next couple of months. Small business travel demand, about 75% of pre-pandemic levels. Yeah, retail travel is up, but business travel never going back to where it were. Uh, we'll jump over to Delta in a moment. They are higher on this. Fourth quarter revenue will likely come in at 26% below 2019 levels when it had 11.44 billion. They expect a pre-tax profit of about $200 million for the last three months of the year. We'll jump over to Delta shares. And these airlines, I pulled them up yesterday. They have been pummeled, man, but maybe yesterday was a max pain situation. You're up 2.5% right now. We pull up Delta on the daily. Yeah, be careful of this one, man. You're bumping up against anytime you have an area, folks, that was support, which is about, about $38, $39, had been an area of support for Delta. You can see that it's already been an area of resistance once for Delta, going back to about eight days ago as we come into that level, potentially facing some resistance as well. We jump over to United. I imagine all the airlines are higher. Yeah, United's up about 1.5% right now. Uh, we jump to American, up one4 Domestically, JetBlue Airlines up barely, up eight tenths percent. Southwest Airlines up about eight tenths percent as well. We jump to the cruise ships, talk about a max pain situation for cruise ships. Barely positive for Carnival with the market right now, and Norwegian actually in the red by about 1% so far this morning. Okay, jumping around to other stocks we have going on, making moves this morning. We talked about Delta. We'll jump past Accenture. Regeneron declining in the pre-market after it said its antibody cocktail loses potency against the Omicron variant. Regeneron did say the cocktail is effective against the Delta variant, REGN. Constant updates, of course. Uh, still sitting right near all-time I believe that's all-time highs, right? Uh, pretty close. Remarkable how you got a triple top up there, right where we're sitting at about 660 for Regeneron shares from the middle of last year. We make above that level in September, right back at that level right now for Regeneron. Yeah, Lennar out with their numbers. 391 a share. They missed the 415 estimate. Revenue also fell short of forecast, hurt by higher lumber costs, as well as increased labor costs and shortages of raw materials, resulted in delayed home deliveries. I chuckle because that's like the trifecta, right? Higher input costs for, for goods, higher input costs for labor, and shortage of materials for supply chain issues. Now, here's the, the, the worrisome part about this. That's going to be the truth from many companies. Lennar down 4.2%. Not that bad of a move considering where this equity has been. We'll zoom it in just on the last couple of years. You come into 2020 at about 77 bucks. You were just trading at 117. All things considered, though, not bad sitting at 108. Uh, they're probably dealing with some real issues in the housing market. Lumber costs, we've just seen it. Supply issues. My dad's talked about uh, getting things from china he was just talking about on his program last night what a container costs when you're just renting it i think he was paying 1750 as in 1750 dollars pre-pandemic levels then it was up to like twelve thousand dollars or something like that the email he got yesterday or this week is up to like nineteen thousand dollars for a container uh that's just uh, quite a price increase folks from under two thousand to almost twenty thousand dollars for a container and that's if you can get it here let alone the delays you have. Lennar down 4.1%. You're going to see a lot of companies, though, talk about being an executive. You almost have a get-out-of-jail-free card if you can spin it off on the public that if bad things are happening, of course you're going to be blaming it on basically rising cost of goods, 
Uh, you're going to be blaming it on supply chain issues, rising wages, et cetera, to hurt earnings. Uh, that's going to be the theme. It's your job as an investor and a trader to sort through when that's actual the reality and when some companies are faltering beyond the issues that other companies are having. Lenar, not that bad of a move. Uh, Novartis, new share buyback program. They would be trading higher on that news. Visa announcing that it added $12 billion in its buyback program. Be careful, folks. When any one of these companies just start trading higher by doing buybacks, you got to be careful. But Visa trading higher on that news as well. we'll. Jump over to Visa shares. Let's put it back to a short-term time frame. Was up much higher, giving it back up about seven tenths percent right now for Visa shares. Yeah, AT and T upgraded uh, at Morgan Stanley to overweight from equal rate. The recent slide in the stock creates an attractive risk reward profile. The firm said there are several other key factors driving the upgrade, pending completion of the Warner Media Discovery merger. AT and T's positive on that, but boy, these these stocks, man. AT and T. Well, there's a nice pop for you, up 4.1 percent, and maybe this is the low because man, it's been searching for a low for the better part of seven months. You were trading at 34 bucks back there, and I believe that's when they spun off HBO. Um, let's put it back on a daily. Uh, you actually traded higher and then jammed lower in that capacity, and you've just continued lower the whole time. Now, here's what to consider, though. As a company like AT&T, you start talking about the dividend, okay? You jump over the fundamentals tab. You slide down, and we're talking about uh, a dividend yield of 7.7% right now. 7.7% for the dividend yield for this company, let alone a price appreciation on top of it. Not bad when you have the 10-year yield sitting at 1.4%. Yes, you were subject uh, to a possible decline in the share price, but man, you've been pummeled. I mean, what are we talking about? We're talking about a company now valued at $165 billion for AT&T. Verizon, I'm biased. My mom worked for Verizon. She has some Verizon shares still out of retirement. But Verizon, you're, you're dealing with some yields as well. We'll pull up their, excuse me, their chart in a moment. But Verizon's talking about a dividend yield of 4.67% right now. And you take a look at Verizon, been quite a pullback as well. Nothing to the degree long term that you're dealing with for the AT&T. Uh, but Verizon on a five-year weekly, let's back it up even further for the monthly. Now, Verizon, be interesting to see if this holds in terms of the uptrend. We're back to Verizon in terms of where we were trading at basically in 2013. But when you're getting 4.6% on a dividend, not bad in the rate environment that we're in. Dividend stocks, especially maybe appealing uh, if you're looking for fixed income. I was reading recently, you know, the, the basic theory of a 60-40 split in your portfolio, 60% equities, 40% bonds. Might not be the case going forward that that's the best case scenario. A lot of uh, investors saying maybe you add some dividend stocks in there who, uh, because, boy, when you're, you're investing 40 percent of your portfolio in fixed income at, at a level of the tenure at 1.4 percent, that might not be a recipe of uh, maxing gains out. Stay tuned, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 10. NASDAQ actually in the red now. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps giving back some of those gains now positive by just six points. Interesting that we drop off on the open right now. You get the NASDAQ giving it back as well. NASDAQ 100, negative 60 points, trading at 16,225. There's a little bit of a drop off for you. Now below the close we had yesterday in the red, you get the Dow up 107, the Russell up three. Maybe the market actually adapting to the fact that the Fed chairman uh, told the market that we were hiking rates faster than they thought yesterday, uh, which was a hawkish statement. Thought that would hit maybe some of the tech stocks, maybe hitting a little bit today uh, in the negative down four tenths. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks. Apple, though, still in the, oh, nope, still in the red. Uh, excuse me, now in the red, was up to 181. Man, Apple, these tech stocks, the volatility that they've had recently. I mean, look at the open, up to 181. And just like that, we give back more than $2 on Apple shares. You jump to Microsoft shares, pretty similar action, back into the red by two tenths. Amazon shares, similar as well, negative by about five cents. We jump over to FedEx. They have their earnings coming out tonight. Ahead of that, you have FedEx up about eight tenths percent. Now, chatting with our man, Kevin Hinks. Ahead of fast market coming up at noon, uh, they're going to be talking about Square. Yeah, Square not out with earnings uh, after the bell. They will just be discussing, though. FedEx, though, the one they are out with their numbers after the bell tonight. You got about a $16 move priced into their earnings after the bell. All right. As I mentioned it, this story out uh, yesterday, but it was talking about Bitcoin traders have to be Fed watchers, just like everyone else. Now, interesting that you have Bitcoin. I brought it up when we we're looking at the charts bitcoin talk about volatility with the market you see the volatility it spikes lower on that fed statement that comes out you accelerate higher in a big way really pushed by the fed chairman's conference you traded up 1500 bucks so from when the chairman started talking at about 230 to where the market finished at four and again interesting that look at the low volatility that bitcoin has overnight OK, and things, of course, pick back up when that's futures open. But Bitcoin does trade overnight uh, in many different markets. It's a worldwide instrument, of course. Uh, but interesting, you have Bitcoin now trading with the market. Didn't think that would be the case for the longest time. Um, that would indicate it's becoming a real market asset class in its own right. All right, folks, speaking of asset classes, how about Tiger Dollars? That's a good segue for you. Our TFNN holiday Tiger Dollar sale, folks, you got one week left. It's amazing uh, that we wrap things up December 23rd, which is Thursday. The market closed for the full day on Christmas Eve this year because Christmas falls on a Saturday. We're running the TFNN holiday Tiger Dollar sale through next Thursday. That's one week from today, folks. We've doubled the bonuses, so now you can get a 20 30 or a 40 percent bonus to spending on depending on what you spend uh we've had some great tiger dollar purchases coming in already folks if you're a current subscriber out there we had a subscriber out there this morning uh he was a subscriber to basil chapman's opening call 
Okay, so what he has is he has the opening call at 149 a month. What he decides to do, uh, he signs up, he pays 500, he gets 600 Tiger dollars. He then changes his subscription from a month to a six month. He locks that in. Uh, he'll end up paying an additional whatever you can always those 600 tiger dollars get used first anything extra can go to your credit card folks but you apply them once to your account they're automatically used he decided to change from a monthly to a six month used his tiger dollars for that six month he's going to be all set for the opening call for the next six months if you're a new subscriber folks a current subscriber the new system we've been on shopify now this is a good segue to shopify because shopify got an upgrade out there as well they're positive this morning uh the tfnn website does run through shopify we use that platform uh, we've used them for about three years, which is remarkable because, man, I was looking at the Shopify chart just yesterday. Uh, Shopify up 2.3%. They get an upgrade this morning, but I was just looking at it yesterday. Shopify, when TFNN came on that platform, trading at about $117, folks. Talk about an acceleration for this company. We weren't the only ones signing up through Shopify. Now, their business really accelerated during the pandemic. Small businesses like TFNN ourselves taking advantage of the ability to build their own uh, storefront within the Shopify platform. Now, for what we do, subscriptions, uh, Tiger TV, special access to Tiger's Den, etc., there is some level of programming that needs to be done because of the cancellation process and everything involved with the subscription-based platform like we have. But if you're selling very simple items on Shopify, you don't need any programming at all, folks. It is an outstanding platform in a big way. They're up about 2.2%. Uh, but getting back to Tiger Dollars, the great thing about joining them is that Tiger Dollars automatically used now, folks. You apply them once, they're automatically used. So I encourage you to check it out. It's going to be the end of the sale before you know it. Don't wait till next week as you're shopping for those last holiday presents. Uh, get in there, get your Tiger Dollars while that sale is doubled uh, for the next week. That's all. All right, jumping around to other news. How about music? How about Bruce Springsteen? How about half a billion dollars? Not bad, man. These music catalogs. Watch out. Sold the rights of his music to Sony Music Entertainment. Could be the biggest deal ever. Struck for a single artist's work. Uh, the price tag? May exceed 500 million, said Billboard, citing people familiar with the term. Um, now, he has been, I think, with Sony. I saw in here something like that for a while. Yeah, but you have Bob Dylan selling his. That number was not released, I believe, the Dylan one, how much he got paid. Uh, Springsteen's been with Columbia Records, a unit of Sony, um, for his entire career. So now Sony buys that catalog off him. Uh, public invest uh, announcement yet to be made, but nonetheless, 500 million bucks, not bad for Bruce Springsteen cashing in there in a big way. Okay, what else we have jumping around? McDonald's, they claw back, speaking of hundreds of millions, 105 million bucks to settle a lawsuit. Their CEO was ousted over relationships with subordinates. Uh, former CEO to return the cash, equity awards, and issued an apology, 105 million bucks. They went after that money, and uh, they probably deserved it. Um, because he wasn't doing the things he was supposed to do. McDonald's had a very, very clear policy when it came to bosses um, with subordinates. And that's the thing, folks. You can complain about this stuff, but I have no sympathy for somebody running a company like that when they have exact details put into place that they know they're breaking. Um, and breaking that detail, man, it cost this guy. And he had done quite a job with McDonald's too, which is a bummer on top of it. Now, McDonald's has done just fine since he's been gone. I'm not sure when's he went. To 2019, he was gone. So sometime back in 2019, I mean, maybe that was the drop off there probably when they found that out. McDonald's was at 208. Since then, stock's up almost 30% in about two years. Uh, during the pandemic, you're pushing all-time highs on McDonald's. Now, we have some McDonald's in my newsletter, folks, Rocket Equities and Options. Uh, I am going to have an update out for subscribers later this afternoon. If you'd like to sign up, you can check it out on the front page. Go over, get some Tiger Dollars first, folks. Get your Tiger Dollars, apply them to your account. It's very simple to do. You apply them to your account once. They get used for all future transactions. Check out my newsletter, Rocket Equities. Maybe you check out the Gold Report, my dad's newsletter um, that's been rocking. Now, when you sign up with Tiger Dollars, folks, you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Okay, you're not happy, we'll refund those Tiger Dollars right back to your account. You can use them for another forward transaction going forward. McDonald's up six tenths percent. They're getting back $105 million um, that they, they claw back from that lawsuit that let McDonald's, uh, yeah, go after some of that pay um, for what he had been doing against what they were supposed to be doing.
not the example you want to be setting in that position in that role. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got three minutes left uh, of the program. I'm going to be coming back. We'll be talking a little bit of markets, talking about what else we have moving today. Tech stocks in the red, only index in the red right now. Bitcoin in the red as well. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative by 10 points, putting it on a one-minute chart to see a little bit of volatility. You did trade higher from about 943. Uh, not small moves here. You're talking about a 12-point pop in the S&P to the upside. We give up 10 points just like that. Right now, you're positive by 12 points in the S&Ps. NASDAQ, though, giving it up back to a five-minute just to see the context of yesterday's move. Uh, NASDAQ. We're talking about 220 points. We are off of the highs, folks. These moves pretty dramatic right now in both directions. We get the VIX spiking back up to 19 from being at 1819 early in this market. As our man Basil Chapman would say, folks, he's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. The day is young. It sure is. We're 25 minutes into the start of trading right now. And you have the S&P. I mean, folks, we were up. You're talking about 30 points now. From where we were just trading at 7 in the morning, I was up early this morning, about 5 in the morning, getting some action done. Uh, and, man, nothing nothing to, to, to let pass you by. As in, that is quite a move, folks, 30 points. 
Uh, we touch all-time highs, and then we give it up just like that. The Dow holding on well, though. Dow up about a half a percent, right at about 36,000 right now. We jump over to that gold contract. Gold continuing to make new highs right now. You get the gold contract up almost 30 bucks. Uh, I say new highs as in session highs. Gold up 30 bucks, up 1.6 percent. We take a look at the daily on gold. And boy, I mean, you rather you got some areas you got to break above. Maybe 1835 is the next area that you could see some resistance. That's an area that we reached in September, also in July, late July and early July before trading lower. Uh, but that's quite a move on gold. And you're talking about from yesterday's low of 1753, gold now adding forty dollars, forty dollars to the price of that gold contract up 30 bucks this morning. And watch out, folks. These markets, they're not stopping. S&P is now just up single digits. The Nasdaq 100. You're talking about 16,205. You've given up 250 points in the highs. And folks, that's a lot of red bars to start the trading day. Always exciting when you got a two-way market, folks. And man, do we have a two-way market when you trade up. You're talking about 140 points to the upside yesterday. And just like that, in the last two hours, we're down about 35 points in the S&Ps. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got Basil up next, Larry live at 11, Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Don't forget about Tiger Dollars, folks. Get over to the front page of TFNN. Get it done. We'll be right back, folks. Have a great Thursday.